What's up everyone, welcome back for another video. So today we're gonna to be teaching you how to change out a broken or old computer power supply or simply just install a new power supply should you run into some problems and need to buy a new one or just maybe you're upgrading your system for more powerful components. So let's go ahead and roll our intro and get right into it. Let's go. URCD key has discounted codes for games and software that are a fraction of what you would pay if you purchased them from a retail store. More specifically, they have great prices on their Microsoft Office 2016 bundle that comes with a Windows 10 license as well. If that's not enough, you can also use my promo code RAV20 to receive 20% off the already discounted price. Just type in your product you're looking for, add it to the cart, view your cart, head to the checkout, type in my promo code, once again, RAV20, and see the sweet savings appear. Check the links in the video description to learn more. All right, before we get started, I'm just gonna do some housekeeping and assume that you clicked on this video because you've already done some troubleshooting and are at the point where you know for sure that your power supply is the component you need to replace, or maybe you want to install a new higher powered GPU or something like that um, that would end up pushing your original power supply unit to its power limits, uh, possibly causing it to spontaneously combust and erupt into a fiery blaze inside of your computer case. Just kidding, that really doesn't happen ever. Well, I think so anyway. Uh, but it goes without saying, please be careful with your components and take precautions before working with them. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to be doing any like troubleshooting or answering uh, why your power supply may be not powering on your system or anything like that. Uh, so if you have questions that pertain to stuff like that, go ahead and check out my full video I did on it linked up here. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, so the reason I'm switching out this power supply is that I noticed while we were running benchmarks uh, for the video we did for this build on the channel, the power supply started making some very weird noises and there was like a terrible coil whine coming from the power supply. And this is usually a sign of the power supply going bad. So in this case, buying a used power supply, unfortunately did not work out for us and uh, this can happen. You know, every, every time you do something on the, the used market. Uh, but we got ourselves a new, fully modular unit from EVGA, so now we're ready to make the swap. The first thing you wanna do is power your system off and of course unplug it from the wall or power source that you're using. This will ensure that no power is running to any of your components and we'll be able to safely work with them now. Another quick thing I always like to do when working on computers is to just simply touch the metal on the computer case every once in a while to discharge static electricity that could harm the components that we'll be touching this entire time. Next, with everything unplugged, we need to remove the front and back panels of our case to gain access to the cables and the power supply unit itself. Now with the powers out and out of the way, we can start unplugging the necessary cables within the case. First, we'll start with the six to eight pin PCIe power cable since it's the first thing sticking out of the case normally or it's right in front of your face. Also, if you're one of the people that are doing this power supply upgrade for also upgrading your GPU, you need to unplug this cable and check your new card for how many PCIe power cables it may require as some high-end cards can require more than just a six pin or an eight pin. It requires multiple of them. Next, we'll move on to the large 24 pin motherboard power cable. You need to squeeze the tab and pull up with a quite a bit of force to get this out sometimes. So if you need to use your other hand to brace against the case, that's totally fine. Just be careful not to hit anything with your hand as you remove the cable. After that, we'll move on to the top left of the motherboard and disconnect the four to eight pin CPU power cable. This just depends on your motherboard. This little guy gets forgotten all the time because it's kind of hidden in the case sometimes. So be sure that you always keep it in your mind and know that it's there. Okay, those are the three main power cables that you need to be aware of, but wait. We also have hard drives and serial ATA devices that require power from the PSU too, right? Uh, well, this may vary from build to build, um, just depends on what you have inside. Uh, just make sure that you remove those power connections going to your hard drives or any other device that runs off of SATA or Molex power that you may have. And just for reference, this is a SATA power connection, and this is a Molex power connection. All right, now that we have everything unplugged, move all the cables out of the case and out of the way and grab your screwdriver. Most PSUs use four Phillips head screws to secure it into the case, so you just have to unscrew those and carefully pull the original power supply unit out of the case. Thank you. 
Now, since you've already pulled a PSU out, you basically just have to do the steps again in reverse. But in case you were here just to install a power supply unit, we'll go through them again and show you how to connect everything. Starting with the new power supply unit, if you have a modular or semi-modular power supply unit, go ahead and connect all of the cables you'll be using in your build to the main unit so you don't have to do it when it's already in the case. And trust me, it sucks to have to do this because it's a very cramped space sometimes, especially if you have, if you have a power supply shield. Uh, so it's just easier for you if you do this right now outside the case. Now with everything plugged into the power supply unit, we're ready to put it back in the case and secure it with the four Phillips head screws that you removed before or that you have sitting around. Quick tip about orientation of your power supply. So this always depends on what case you have because some have a top mounted PSU, some have uh, a bottom mounted PSU, and some have dust filters for the PSU fan and some do not. So here's what I suggest. If you have a grill at the bottom with a nice filter and you plan to have your PC on your desk or anywhere the airflow will not be restricted, like the floor, uh, mount your PSU with the fan facing down to pull air in from the bottom. Now, if you can only put your PC on the floor or you have a top mounted power supply unit in your case with no air filtration, just mount it with the fan facing towards the inside of the case so it will pull air from the inside of the case instead of pulling a bunch of dust, dirt, and grime in from the floor. Also, I really never suggest putting your PC on a floor or carpet it's very dirty and it'll be cleaning your PC all the time, so if you can help it, just don't do it. Now that we have our power supply unit oriented and secured to our case, let's start connecting our required cables. First, we'll start with the top left corner of our motherboard again and plug in our four to eight pin CPU power cable. Sometimes these can be a bit too short for your case, so if that happens, you can always just buy some cable extensions to help you out with cable management and reaching that part of your case from the backside of it. Next, let's plug in our 24 pin motherboard power cable back into the motherboard. You'll have to really press firmly with this and make sure you have have it fully seated. So just give it a bit of force and let it clip in. After that, we can plug in our PCIe power cables into our graphics card. Like I said before, your card may require a different combination than I'm showing here as our RX 580 requires just one eight pin connector. For example, my RTX 2080 over my main build requires one six pin and one eight pin. So just keep that in mind and uh, make sure you plug in the appropriate cable or cables for your specific card you're using. Now let's move on to our SATA devices. Now again, this step really depends on how many hard drives or other devices you're using in your build that require SATA or Molex power. So just use the SATA power cables you have in your power supply unit and make sure they're fully seated into your devices um, that require that kind of power. And that's it. So after you've done all of that, make sure you plug your PC back into the wall or power source you're using and flip the switch on the back of the power supply unit to the on position and enjoy using your PC with a new working power supply. So that's gonna be it for this one. Hopefully you found this helpful or educational. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if there are any more PC related tutorials that you think I should cover, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to cover some more. Lastly, if you enjoy content like this and you wanna see more that my channel has to offer, be sure to get subscribed with notifications on so that you'll always know when a new stream or video goes live. But until then, I'll see you in the next one. Later.